Thanks for joining us here on NFL Daily by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones, thanks for stopping by as we are talking about the latest big board from ESPN NFL draft analyst Mel Kuyper Jr., his top 25 players in this upcoming NFL draft. We'll break them down piece by piece. Some notable changes from the last time Mel released his big board. We'll go over all of that and more coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do, I want to know... Have you ever seen the rain? No, 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 not quite. Who is your favorite player in the 2024 NFL Draft? So many players to choose from. No wrong answers here. Not who is the best, but who is your favorite? Weigh in the comment section. Let, let me know what you think, and we'll get started with today's show. A shocker to no one. Caleb Williams remains number one atop Mel Kuyper's big board, followed by Mar Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver out of the Ohio State. But things start to really get interesting with the number three selection, and that's where we have a big change. Is Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback out of LSU, has moved into the number three spot on Kuyper's big board. More from Mel on the move. I went deep on Daniels' future ahead of him taking home the Heisman Trophy. In short, he was consistent enough over the final two months of the regular season that I now feel comfortable moving him into my big board. Daniels has rare ability as a dual-threat playmaker. He can evade, elude, and blow by defenders, but also impressed with the way he can run through contact. But it's his improvement as a passer that has him looking like a round one selection. Now, you look at Daniels' stock, and it's taken a big rise over the last several weeks. And... What you're seeing out of Jaden Daniels, what's, what impresses me is that this is a true dual-threat quarterback. A lot of times we talk about dual-threat quarterbacks of being very good runners and just kind of average passers, right? You look at Jaden Daniels, and the product that we saw on the football field in 2023 was not only a fantastic runner, but an excellent passer. He had a completion percentage of over 72% this year, threw for 40 touchdowns, uh, over 1,100 rushing yards, 10 rushing touchdowns. Granted, he had a very good receiving core. Nobody's denying that, but you can't help but notice how well Jane Daniels was with the football there with the LSU Tigers. And with him getting the number three spot, Mel has him above Drake May. We'll talk more about May here in just a second. But what do you guys think? Who's the better quarterback? Is it Drake May? Is it Jane Daniels? Who do you have? as the number two quarterback in the 2024 draft. Weigh in let me know what you think on our pinned comment today. JD for Jaden Daniels. DM, check your DMs for Drake May and let us know what you think. Today's show is sponsored by a Prize Picks. Prize Picks the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. Choose two or more players on any given category. You get the choice of more or less, whether you're talking fantasy points, passing yards, rushing yards, maybe you want to mix and match different leagues, the NFL, the NBA, NHL, and more. Go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS for a $100 deposit match. I'm looking ahead to the big game this week on Price Picks. Uh, I got Patrick Mahomes to have more than uh, half a passing yard, and I think that's possible. I'm going to go with uh, Isaiah Pacheco to have more than half a rushing yard or receiving touchdown, and then Christian McCaffrey to have more than 35.5 receiving yards. If all three of these hit, I'm turning $20 into $100 on Price Picks. Play along with me, pricepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Price Picks, proud partner of Chat Sports. Number four is where we find Drake May, the uh, North Carolina quarterback, holding on to that spot, taking one step down from the previous Big board from Mel. Well, Rome Adunze, the wide receiver from the University of Washington, U-Dub, slides in at number five as the highest-ranked wide receiver on the list. Malik Neighbors, the teammate of Jane Daniels at LSU, falls to number six uh, on Mel's big board, the number two receiver on the board. Well, at number seven, we find Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia. Number eight, Joe Alt, the offensive tackle from Notre Dame. Number nine, offensive tackle from Penn State, Olu in the spot. Well, rounding out the top ten is Dallas Turner, the outside linebacker for the University of Alabama. Then we find another LSU wide receiver at the number 11 spot. That's Brian Thomas Jr., 
on the board. And then this one might surprise some folks, but he's still holding his own out there. A unicorn, if you will. A white corner. Yes. To Cooper DeGene, the corner out of Iowa, gets the number 12 position holding serve there. Well, Nate Wiggins, the corner out of Clemson, is number 13 on Mel's big board. And then making a significant jump up from the last big board is Jared Verse, the defensive end from Penn State. Uh, decided to not come out in last year's draft, hoping to be a top 10 pick in this year's draft. Here's what Mel had to say on Jared Verse and his move up to number 14 on the big board. He was a little inconsistent for the Seminoles. A knee injury likely contributed. But his combination of power and speed off the edge is impressive versus super quick off the line of scrimmage and is tenacious as a pass rusher. He is a perfect fit as an end in a 4-3 scheme. You know, when I look at defensive players in this year's draft, personally speaking, I feel like Verse is going to be the safest pick of all the defensive players. He might not be the best, but I feel like if I was looking to find a guy that was as close to the sure thing as you can get when I'm talking defensive players in this year's draft, Jared Verse is that guy. Coming off a season with 41 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, nine sacks, and one forced fumble. Jared Verse is that dude. I'm very high on Jared Verse. I think this is a good call by Mel to move him up to 14, and I don't think he's done climbing. I think we're going to talk about him uh, cracking the top 10 when it's all said and done. Who is the best defensive player in the 2024 NFL Draft? Is it Jared Verse? Is it somebody else? Weigh in the comment section and tell us who you believe that is. Low two, the outside linebacker from UCLA uh, fits in at the number 15 spot. Then we go to number 16, Terrion Arnold, the corner from Alabama, uh, slides in. Well, at number 17, we find Keon Coleman, wide receiver from Florida State, and he's fallen a couple spots from where he was at last time on Mel's big board. Here's more from Mel on Keon Coleman. With a big frame, he can bully smaller defenders. He didn't play much out of the slot last season, but he caught four scores out of that alignment in 2023. His production was up and down during the season. He has the talent to be a wide receiver one at the next level. What impressed me about Coleman, going back to the LSU game earlier this season, was his ability to just take over a game. We've talked a lot on this show about those LSU receivers and that high-powered Jaden Daniels offense. But you know who was the best player in the field that day? It was Keon Coleman. He showed up and showed out with multiple touchdowns and just dominated on the football field. And I know the numbers... This year, he didn't put up a ton of yards, but he did the most important thing, and that was get to the end zone. 11 times, uh, he might as well be an ATM, an automatic touchdown machine with what he was able to do this past year. It's a very good year for receivers in this upcoming draft. Rome Adunze, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, uh, Keon Coleman, just to name a few. If you had to pick one wide receiver, which wideout would you go with? Who is the best wideout in the 2024 NFL draft? Let me know in the comments section. RO for Roma Dunze, BT for Brian Thomas Jr., MN for Malik Neighbors, KC for Keon Coleman. Number 18, here we go. That is where we find Troy Faltuanu, the offensive guard from Washington, taking the 18th position. Well, at 19, Talisie Fuega, the offensive tackle from Oregon State, takes that spot. 20, JC. Latham, the offensive tackle from Alabama, slides into this position. And then, rounding out the top 25, here's our final five players in Mills' big board. Marius Mims, the offensive tackle from Georgia. Well, Tyler Guyton, the 6'7", yes, you heard that right, offensive tackle from Oklahoma, is at number 22. And then entering the list for the very first time is none other then Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy at number 23 overall. McCarthy, little teaser, folks, on the big board, you know who's not? Michael Penix Jr. More on that in just a second. Let's start with McCarthy here. I recently projected McCarthy in the middle of round one in my debut mock draft that was to Seattle, by the way, and I think he will put up great testing numbers at the combine. Sure, he averaged just 22.5 pass attempts per game, 
in 2023 and only needed to complete 10 passes in the national title game, but his upside is immense. Now, this is where I disagree with Mel. I like what I saw from Michael Penix Jr. more than I did J.J. McCarthy in this past college football season. I know some of you are going to say, well, McCarthy won the national championship and beat Michael Penix Jr. head-to-head. I get that. Don't get me wrong. But here's what the difference is for me, personally, where I disagree with Mel. I saw Washington win games this year because of Michael Penix Jr. He was a difference maker. J.J. McCarthy was not asked to carry his team ever. They were led by their run game. Now, I'm not saying that J.J. McCarthy can't be that in the National Football League. But given the two, given the option, when you look at the numbers, I think the choice is pretty obvious, personally. I would take Penix over J.J. McCarthy. Now, McCarthy is younger. You could argue that there might be higher upside there, and he has more of a running ability than Michael Penix Jr. does. All of that is fair to say. But I like what I saw from Penix, his ability to lead and carry this Washington team on his back, his passing ability. Personally, I like Penix Jr. more, but who do you like more? That's what we want to ask you here on this edition of NFL Daily. Is it J.J. McCarthy, type JM? Is it Michael Penix Jr., type MP? Let us know what you think. Final two players on this list, offensive tackle Jordan Morgan from the Arizona Wildcats at 24. Well, rounding out the top 25, Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle out of Texas, I'm extremely high on. Uh, I would have him higher than 25 personally, but Mel does his thing. He does what he does. Folks, thanks for joining us here this edition of NFL Daily. If you made it to the end of today's video, which why would you not make it to the end of the video? You had to find out who the top 25 were. Spam real one in the comments section. We'll see you next time right here on the channel. 